This evening we have the SM200 kit from Strut Monkey. This is the Bilstein B8 shocks with the IBAC springs on it and it'll lower your car by an inch and give you the M3 feel of it. So today we're going to be installing it on this car right here, which is my customer's vehicle, Brandon. And uh, yeah. So like I just said, this is the SM200 kit from Strut Monkey. The nice thing about this kit is, it's 100% fully assembled and ready to go. Unlike the competitors where they'll sell you the shocks, the springs, and then it's up to you to find the rest of this stuff. You'll have to source the bump stops, top hats, upper and lower insulators, the top nut, the spacer in between that, and then probably a few other things I'm forgetting as well. In the Strut Monkey kit, that you get mailed to your door, you get this complete strut assembly, and this is for the front of the vehicle. And for the rear, you get the complete shock absorber for this vehicle. And then you also get the lowering spring as well if you choose to lower your vehicle. Cool thing about these kits is they come with all OEM parts and OEM quality parts that are guaranteed to fit on your vehicle. Another thing to think about too is spring compressors. They're super dangerous. So this is the basic tool set that I use for the front and the rear suspension. Uh, for the front suspension, hammer, I used a chisel to open up the knuckle on it. 18 millimeters were used, 16 millimeter, 14 millimeter was used for the upper strut bars. E-Torx was used for the strut bars as well. Um, 13 millimeter for the upper uh, bearing plate. 10 millimeter was used for the brake line bracket. 18 was used for the control arm, 21 is also used for the control arm, uh, actually no, 21 is used for the rear. So here's what we used for the rear, we used 21 for the rear, we used 17 for the lower uh, shock mount, uh, the, the shock to the mount, and then we used the E12 for the shock mount as well. Uh, we used a 6 millimeter uh, quarter inch drive for the interior, loosening up the uh, shock absorber. And then for the new shock, we use the T30 for the bill stain. All right, first step of this job, take the wheel off. So we have to take this strut off right here. On the top, there is three 13 millimeters. There is a bolt and a nut right here for the sway bar. That has to come off. That is a 16. And then we have to loosen up this 18 millimeter bolt right here for the actual strut. This is the knuckle that clamps it down. So that comes off next. What we have to do is we have to loosen up this arm right here. If you look behind there, well, you probably can't see too much, but there is a bolt that comes out. It's also a 18 millimeter bolt. It's dependent on the vehicle. This one has brand new M3 control arms on it. So there is, if you look back here, this one has a Heim joint on it. So it's able to flex up and down really easy. Um, you may or may not have that depending on your control arm style. But if you have a rubber molded bushing in there, you will have to loosen up this bolt and it's an 18 millimeter just so you could get the articulation to drop the whole control arm assembly down and get the strut out of this. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that. So here's a 16 millimeter. That nuts off, set it aside. Um, this is a new sway bar link, like I mentioned. You may or may not have to put a wrench on the backside and hold it. Um, it's usually a 17 millimeter wrench to hold the backside, that way you don't spin it at the same time. But luckily enough, I did not have to do that. So we'll pull that out at a later time. Next step, let's take the 18 millimeter off this side. I usually like to break this nut loose first. So that's broken loose now. I'll get on the other side and turn it. Pull it 
comes out. So now what we'll do is we'll wiggle this off right here, which this is for your ABS sensor. So be careful about this. Otherwise you'll be wondering what's going on if you ruin it. Next step, we're loosening the front control arm. So this bolt is loosened. And now we have to go up top. These are the three strut nuts for the strut assembly. In order to get to this one, yeah, you can use a wrench to get under there. What I like to do is take this bolt out here, loosen the center bolt up here, take this off and slide it over. That way I could access this bolt nice and easy. I've done this many times before where I'm like, eh, I'll just take this off. But honestly, it's easy enough just to get this and move it out of the way. Be extremely careful. You have 12 volts positive going to this. If your cap is off right here and just dangling like that, and you take this bolt and slide it into this, you may create an arc and that's not good. So on the strut tower brace that goes from here to here, uh, there will be a little, little cover on here and you just take a screwdriver and half turn it and pull it out. Um, this one does not have that cover, so I don't have to do that step. But on that bolt right there, it is a E18, which is a big guy. If you don't have access to this, you could get away using the 14 millimeter. It goes on here and fits nice and snug. And you can take this and loosen it. Loosen it up with the 14 millimeter. And then this bolt right here is a E14. Off. And slip this out of the way. And we have access to that 13 millimeter nut now. For this nut back here, I have a 13 millimeter socket with a swivel. So that's off right now. Move that back in position. Take this one off. And I'm just going to loosen up this nut. So now it's loose. All right, so now that we have those bolts loosened up up there, we still have the sway bar link in, and it's kind of on an angle because the other side's pushing on it. So what I want to do is push down on the sway bar a little bit. And get it out, out of the way. So now that's out of the way. My whole goal is to drop this down as assembly, flip it out here past the fender, and then we could pull off the strut. In order to do that, we have to loosen up this bracket here just so we don't put immense stress on this brake line. Um, brake lines are kind of fragile in an aspect where if we really put a bind on this or kink it, we could internally collapse the brake line. So we don't want to do that. So we just want to loosen this up. That way it has some wiggle room so we could drop this down and pull outside this fender. And then on this fender here, grab your tape, your painter's tape. It's not too sticky to wreck the paint on it. Go ahead and tape up this edge right here. That way we don't ruin the paint. I mean, we're not going, this is just a protective layer, just in case we go really crazy, but we're not going to go crazy on that. This has two 10 millimeter nuts on it. Loosen that one up. Loosen this one up. Just kind of wiggle this brake line, this brake carrier out of the way. That way it has some free play in it for when this drops down and swings out. And then up top, pick up on the bottom of the rotor like that. Unloosen this with your left hand. Hold on, we gotta pick it up a little bit more. Or you can do your right hand. Whatever hand you want to do. Take the nut, place it right here. And then if you come down here, the suspension can drop down. Good amount. It's good to have the wheel all the way left. That way the tie rod is in towards the vehicle really far. And it gives you a lot more travel for the strut to go down and out.
like I said before, be careful about stressing everything out. And actually what I want to do right here is take off this ABS sensor. Unplug this ABS sensor. That way we're not putting a lot of stress on it. Grab your chisel. I want to say there is a special tool that goes in here to open it up, but I don't have that special tool yet. I might want to buy it in the future, but we'll see about this. This works pretty well. Grab your chisel, put it back here, and tap down on it. And we should be able to slip this right out. Maybe we have to go a little bit wider. Yeah, we got to go wider on this. There you have it, she's out. We have the Strut Monkey shock assembly right here, B8 shock. Um, what I want to do is transfer this little cap over here. What this is, it's a dust cap. So if any debris or dirt gets in this right here, this is the bearing plate and it'll collect in there any dust or dirt. So let's go ahead and swap that over really quick. What do I have? I guess I got this. I got, I got my little wedge here. Just lift up on this plastic cap. Boom. Plop it right in there. Done. Since I use this to take my cap off, I'm going to put it right back in. And you want to be careful of where you place this. A little tech tech here. This is centering alignment pins for the knuckle. And obviously, if you put your wedge in right here, you will have a tough time slipping this shock in. So I always go, I don't know, about yay far so it doesn't go in all the way. Spread apart, you can slip the new assembly in. And this should go down to where it bottoms out on this tab. So just plop it in a little bit more. Now it's in all the way. Now we can take out the wedge. Just wiggle it out. It's out. We could put this bolt in for now and just leave it in, but we still have to put the bracket on with it. Now we have this bolt tightened up. It's time to swivel this back in position. I have it halfway started. Put one thread on it, let it rest, and you could usually get to the other ones. The next thing you wanna do is tighten up these bolts. Kinda of do it at the same time so it goes up nice and easily. And there's a centering pin right here. You wanna make sure that centering pin is centered so it goes in and finds its home. Go ahead and tighten up your strut brace. I tighten up this, this bolt first and then I do the center bolt up here. A little helpful hint for you guys. Make sure you have this ABS sensor going around the shock. I know it doesn't look right, but it's supposed to be there from factory like that. So now that's like that. Grab your ABS wire and connect it back to where you found it. Back in its spot, we'll pick up this bracket, put those 10 millimeter nuts back on. Next step is putting the sway bar link back on. All right, this is a 16 millimeter nut and we're just going to tighten it down. So this is the front control arm that's in there currently, just like this. 
It's very important that you jack this car up and tighten this part down while it's loaded because this is a rubber bushing in here. And if you tighten up the bushing like this, when you let your car down, this, part, this spot's going to sit in that position and stay in that position and this arm will come up and it'll pretty much ruin this whole bushing inside. So now we're going to jack up this side of the vehicle and tighten it up in the position it's supposed to be in. So I felt the vehicle lift up slightly, which is telling me that we should stop. Just tighten it up. This is the 18 millimeter bolt on the back side here. This arm was from the driver's side and you have to put extreme caution with this bracket right here. This is your headlight level sensor and it's also for your stability control. So just be careful when you loosen up this part of the bushing and drop it down that you don't ruin or damage the sensor. Anything that you touch on your personal vehicle, it's a great idea to go back through and mentally check over every bolt that you unloosened and tightened up. So you could do this with a Sharpie or a paint marker. Paint marker. Um, just go through and mark every bolt and make sure it's tightened up. So every bolt that you touched, I touched this one, it's torqued to the correct spec. Put a mark on it. I touched this bolt for the strut and the knuckle, that's tightened. This control arm bolt down here, it's tightened. These three bolts up here, it's tightened up. Now it's time to put the wheel on. Be very careful um, not to scratch wheels on the inside of the barrel. This vehicle had lots of rust around the hub of it, so I cleaned off the rust with a wire brush and put some anti-seize on it. That way the wheel isn't stuck on for the next guy. All right, rear wheel comes off, and then I'll explain everything that needs to happen on the inside behind the wheel. What we have to do now is take off this shock absorber. Look how nasty that thing is. That's pretty bad. And then the next thing we have to do is remove this coil spring and put in the Eibach one inch lowering spring on it. In order to do that, we have to A, remove the interior trim just a little bit. I'll show you a quick and easy way how to do that. And B, we have to pull, there's a 21 millimeter bolt down here for the lower control arm. It's right, right in here. I don't know if you can see it, but we have to remove that one next. I'll show you a different clip of it. But, um, and that will allow us to take that bolt out, lower this control arm back here and get this coil spring out of the way and put the new ones on. Back here, we have fold down seats on a E9335D. Um, if you don't have fold down seats, you'll have to actually remove all this carpet trim back here. And in order to do that, you basically, there's two tabs up here that you have to remove. There's a Phillips screwdriver and Phillips head bolt in here and right here. Then you have to use your pry tool Pull this out, pull that out, pull this one and that one. There's four of them out. And you have to remove this. There's a push in right here that you have to remove, a push in up here that you have to remove, and then a push in right here that's already removed because I'm going to show you the quick and easy way for fold down seats. For this vehicle, go ahead and grab the top of the side bolster right here, pull it out, and then lift it up. This part's stuck in here. There's a tab that you have to pull down and take it off. Go ahead and place this back in here for when you install it. Set that aside, which would be back here. Go ahead and flip this up and backwards. And then now you could take off this push in, move this out of the way. And now you have access to this grommet, which then accesses you to the shock absorber right here. 
inside the vehicle you have this nut here and then you can imagine the body sits in between here and here and gets sandwiched together. In order to remove this, what you have to do is I have these cool Bostage uh, pass-through sockets and it's a 16 millimeter, which is this one right here. What I do in the vehicle is, um, in order to unloosen this bolt, you have to hold the, the shock itself so it doesn't spin while you unloosen it. And I have these cool little pass-through wrenches that allows me to hold this and hold the inside of this while loosening up the bolt. That way it doesn't spin on us. Now we're going to take the center nut off, 17 millimeter. And then we're also going to take these E12 torque spits out on each side for the bottom of the strut mount, the shock mount actually. Now we have those three loosened at the bottom. Go ahead and bring down your shock. And we can wiggle it out as an assembly, just like this. Next step, we're gonna take off this 21 millimeter bolt. There's a nut on the other side of it. So grab your 21 millimeter wrench to grab the nut on the other side of it. It's unloosened now. Now that it's unloosened, um, we'll go ahead and get a jack underneath this spot right here, just to relieve some of the tension. And we'll go ahead and take this 21 millimeter bolt out. Go ahead and take this bolt out now that we have the jack underneath it. I use the impact on it to drive it out. You have to be very careful on what you're doing about that because you can ruin the threads. I did not ruin the threads on it because I did not go crazy on it. Now that we have that bolt out, go ahead and lower the, down the jack. And now we could get this arm out of the knuckle down here and get the spring out. And I just kind of take my foot, plop it down a little bit. And then what we do is we just wiggle it on out. On the driver's side vehicle, there is a headlight uh, leveling sensor and it's also for the stability control. Um, it bolts right here on the control arm and it has a 10 millimeter bolt going to it. Make sure you remove that bolt, that way it's free hanging. That way you could drop down uh, this lower control arm and get the spring out. Just a little tech tip for you, but um, here's the new Eibach lowering spring. Go ahead and put this wide mouth of the lower insulator towards the inside of the vehicle. So plop that right down in, push down, push the spring right in. It should seat nice and tight in there. So now we're going to put the jack back underneath the control arm and jack it up. Boom. All right. Next, we'll tighten up this bolt. And this bolt right here can be tightened up in any position. It's a heim joint right here. It does not matter which position it gets tightened up. So next, we have our fancy Bilstein shock that's going in the rear. Um, this is the lower shock mount, so let's put it in, and I like to put these in first, 
So before I put it in, I like just to put a tiny bit of grease in this hole. That way the shock slips right in and you're smooth sailing after that. So drop it in the bottom of this control arm. It doesn't matter which orientation it goes as far as uh, one way or the other. Now uh, it's dropped in. Go ahead and start your two E12 bolts at the bottom. Just start them up. Do not tighten them yet. Get a couple threads on them. That's one. That's the other side. Once you have them tightened, go ahead and apply just a thin coat of grease on the bottom of this so it slips right in. So your shock set assemblies like this, you have your uh, shock plate and you have your bushing that goes in here. And I like to apply some lube to this. That way it slips right in the body of the vehicle. What I like to do is compress it down while it's upright. Just like this. And now it's a speed race game or a speed game. You have it compressed. You want to put it in the bottom of the, the shock mount and then place it in top of the body right here. Now it's in the top, now it's in the bottom. We need the nut that goes in the bottom. Screw that on a few threads. From here, I like to leave these loose and tighten the upper body mount. Once I have that tightened, I'll tighten up the bottom three. So now that we have the shock in here, take your uh, nut and top plate and go ahead and thread it in the shock a few turns. Sometimes these are tricky and you have to use your left arm and wiggle it up in there. And now I have a couple threads on it. So that's perfect. This is a 16 millimeter ratcheting wrench and you can go ahead and use this to tighten up the shock. And we also have to hold the shock in order to tighten it up too. It's a little easier for me to use the pass-through socket though. So I will go ahead and do that right now. All right, the final step for your Shrut Monkey purchase. and install the wheel. Next step, torque down the wheels to spec.